Imagine this. You want to go from your home to a restaurant. For that, you open Google Maps, type the name of the restaurant, and within just one or two seconds, your phone shows you the fastest route. But if we pause for a moment, a natural question comes to mind. How on earth does the computer figure this out so fast? Think about it. A city has thousands of roads, thousands of junctions, flyovers, small lanes, service roads, one-ways, and highways. Now behind the scenes, the computer does not see a beautiful colored map the way you and I see it. Instead, it sees a giant puzzle made of points and lines. Each point is like a location, for example, your home, a crossing, a corner, or the restaurant. Each line is like a road between two points. So if Google Maps tried to blindly test all possible routes from your home to the restaurant, it would take forever. The computer cannot afford to waste time. It must be smart. So what it really needs is a trick, a method, or an algorithm that does not look at every possible road but still finds the shortest one. That method is what we call an A-star algorithm. It is one of the most famous algorithms in computer science. Of course, Google Maps also uses other things. It uses live traffic data from people's phones. It uses speed limits. It uses rules for turns. It has shortcuts stored for highways and so on. But the backbone, the core idea that guides the search, is still a star algorithm. Today, we will learn this algorithm in the simplest possible way, step by step. To build the intuition, picture walking on a board made of square tiles from a marked start tile to a marked end tile. You want to reach the end tile quickly. At some point on the tile, say this one, you will think that I have already walked four steps, and I think I will need three more steps to reach the end tile. You add these two numbers and you get seven. Each move from one tile to another costs you something like, for city maps, that cost is time. For games, it might be energy. That is exactly the thinking of a star algorithm. At every point, it asks two questions. How much have I already spent to reach here? Then, how much more do I expect to spend to reach the goal? Then it adds the two. Whichever direction has the smallest total is the one it chooses to check next. This adding of the two things is the heart of the algorithm. And for that, we define three magic values. A star gives every tile these three values, F, G, and H. The first value is called G, which means the exact cost you already spent to reach this particular tile from the start. The second value is called H, which means the estimated cost to go from this particular tile to the goal. It is not exact. It is just a guess. That is why we call it a heuristic. The third value is called F. F is simply the total of G plus H. Now let us put this into action. Let's say the start tile is at coordinate 0, 0. The goal tile is at coordinate 3, 2, which means 0. 1, 2, 3 downward, and 0, 1, 2 to the right. We are using these color codes to denote the start and the end tile. Also, this colored tile shows that it is an obstacle. Yeah, obstacles make it more realistic. Let us use A star to find the shortest path. On a particular square grid, there are usually eight possible moves from a tile. North, south, east, west, northeast, northwest, southeast, and southwest. For most grids, a straight move to an adjacent tile costs one unit, and a diagonal move costs about 1.4 units, or square root of two, because it covers more ground. Now, choosing H values matters a lot for speed and correctness. Two common choices for H values are the Euclidean heuristic and the Manhattan heuristic. If your current tile is at 1, 1, and the goal is at 3, 2, then the Euclidean heuristic says h equals the square root of 5 because it measures straight-line distance, while the Manhattan heuristic says 
H equals absolute of 3 minus 1 plus absolute of 2 minus 1, which is 2 plus 1 or 3. It is just the number of horizontal steps plus vertical steps still needed. We will use Manhattan for H and Euclidean for G. For every tile, we will also keep a record of its parent tile, meaning the tile from which we reached this current tile, so that later we can trace back the exact path from the goal to the start. Now here's the magical part. A star keeps track of two different groups. One group is called Yet to Visit, which are promising tiles to check next, and another group called Visited, which are tiles we already visited and we will not reconsider them. The idea of this algorithm is to always pick the most promising tile from the Yet to Visit group, then move it to the Visited group, look at its neighbors, and update their values. That is the loop you have to follow, and it keeps going until you reach the end. Okay, now step one. Choose the start tile and put it in yet to visit group. At the start position, G value equals zero because we have not moved yet. The H is the Manhattan distance from this start tile to end, which is five. So the F equals zero plus five equals five. Also, the parent tile will be none or n because the start tile has no parent. Right now, only the start tile is in our yet to visit group. Add this tile to the visited group and then expand. From zero, zero, we can move to these three locations, right? Now, if the neighbor is in the visited group, then we ignore them. Right now, none of these neighbors are in the visited group. But since this is an obstacle, we can move to only these two neighbors, right? Add them to the yet to visit group. Now calculate their F, G, and H values. For neighbor 1, 0, the G is 1, the H is 4 using Manhattan distance, so F equals 1 plus 4, which is 5. Similarly, for neighbor 1, 1, the G is 1.4, H is 3, so F equals 4.4. Also, for their parent position, Enter 0, 0. Great. Now, from this yet to visit group, find the neighbor with the lowest F value. It is 1, 1. So select it and put it in the visited group. Now, check if this is the end tile. No, it is not. So continue with the same process. Expand its neighbors. From 1, 1, we can move to these eight locations, right? But these three locations are obstacles and this location is already present in the visited group, so ignore it. Hence, we are left with these four neighbors. Put them in the yet to visit group. Let us calculate their G values. Already we have a G value of 1.4 for this tile. Now either add one to this value or 1.4, depending on whether the neighbor is horizontal and vertical or diagonal. So G for these two neighbors will be 2.4. And for these two, it will be 2.8, right? Now the H value is super easy. It is the Manhattan distance from the current tile to the goal. So fill the H values accordingly. Then calculate their F values and finally record their parent tiles as 1, 1. Awesome. Now from this yet to visit group, find the neighbor with the lowest F value. It is 1, 2, so select it and put it in the visited group. Notice how A star algorithm quickly jumped closer to the goal because the combination of G and H made that neighbor more attractive. Now check if this is the end tile. No, it is not. Then keep repeating the process. Find the neighbors which are not in the visited group and are also not an obstacle. Put them in the yet to visit group then fill their F, G, and H values. Also record their parent tile. Then select the best neighbor based on lowest F value and put it in the visited tile. Now check if this is the end tile. No, it is not. So continue with the same process and eventually you will reach the end tile, so we stop here. This visited group will give you the shortest path. See how smooth that was? Now let's step back. In Google Maps, instead of small tiles, the points are actual road intersections. 
Instead of cost being 1 or 1.4, the cost is time in minutes. On top of this, it adds traffic information, road rules, and shortcuts. But the base is still the same algorithm you just saw. By the way, this is the code for this algorithm. You can see that we have defined our maze here with zeros being the path we can visit, and one means an obstacle. And also we have provided the start and the endpoint coordinates. Then these are the possible eight directions I have mentioned. So, if we plot this maze, we get this. See, this is the start, and this is the end. Now if we plot this maze using the path argument, then we get this path, same as we saw just now. Now let me change the position of the obstacle. Look at this beauty. We got a new separate shortest route. Finally, let me change the location of the end tile. Now, let us rerun this code again and look at that. We have our own Google Map. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. So good!